Well, welcome everybody. This is the uh, Blender Help Desk, which is the Planetarium Zoom workshop. Uh, it's actually not a workshop, it's a help desk. And it's a free form drop in, uh, ask your questions about Blender and maybe get them answered too. Um, so uh, this is a free form. Uh, Jeff Nee is an organizer, but we have some experts here. Uh, we have probably some novice who will be dropping in. Uh, and <clears throat> Waylena, what are we looking at here? Oh, what we're looking at is in Blender, this is a render view using a fisheye camera. And um, just as a challenge, uh, a few months ago, my boss said, you know, wouldn't it be cool to have a bunch of Lucky Charms in the dome? And so I made uh, Lucky Charms marshmallow models in Blender. And let me change the view a little bit on this and show individual charms. I've got to break it out of the 3D view so I can show, there we go. I'm gonna just change back. So there's the balloon and the horseshoe and the unicorn is the one I'm most proud of because the texturing was a lot of fun for that to try and, try and get it. So what I did here in Blender was not what I did for the dome. For the dome, I wanted it in real time. So I exported each of the little models as um, DAE format and the uh, uh, Digistar read in the textures along with the models. And so I'm able to put them up in the dome, spin them, do whatever I want with them. But I could not resist playing around with Blender's geometry nodes. I made a, just an icosphere and yeah, used geometry nodes to um, did some just transforming it a little bit and distributed all of those models. Uh, all across the face and then used the uh, collection of charms. The collections are the way to group things in Blender and set them up to just put them randomly in uh, different orientations. And I used a starry background because he doesn't love a starry background. And these are the, um, one of the star maps that uh, download from the Science Visualization Studio. Um, they just fantastic star maps. I, I love them. My favorite to go to for that. So that's what we're looking at. And I'm just changing the changing the view angle. There's the icosphere. Now we can see it better. That's so much fun, Waylita. Do you share your files anywhere? Your Blender files anywhere? Um, I have been sharing them. I don't have this one, but I can uh, upload it on my GitHub. And uh, the, my GitHub is under the username Waystar, W-A-Y-S-T-A-R. Uh, and that's also where I put uh, the files that I use for uh, backgrounds for Stellarium, for the landscapes that I've made that we also use in the Planetarium Dome and the Digistar and a few other odds and ends, including my Blender uh, previous workshop files. And does that link, um, can I find that link on your blog? I think so, yes. I haven't updated okay. that blog in a long time, but I need to get to that, but it, it is there. Yes. Okay, because Alan just found it too, right, Alan? Because it was, I had put the link in, in my, in that primer workshop all the way back, gosh, who knows when. Um, so if you, if you're listening and you want to find um, that link, uh, it should be in, in the files, but I'll, I'll dig it up at some point. Sure, I'll, I'll pull up some of mine then, um, unless Wayne, you want to share one more thing before? Um, I, I can share the Blender GIS terrain if you want to see that real quick. Oh, definitely. Okay, then I'll share the screen again. So this is, I'm just deleting the default cube. I find it comforting to always find that default cube there. So I, uh, now I've installed the Blender GIS plugin, which I can uh, provide the link for that. I actually have it handy in a browser. And um, for this, I've just been setting up a base map pulls in um, what I've been doing is selecting areas for local parks and then creating outlines. But for a demo, let's find a more interesting area because Illinois doesn't have a lot of contour. I mean, it does, but not like other parts of the country, certainly. Let's see, that's a pretty good. I'm zoomed in and the area here, I'm gonna press E and that, isolates just that area. Now, if I want, 
I can pull in uh, elevation model to go with that. Uh, but if you do set this up, and I've got links to this as well, the ones from Open Topography, you now have to have your own API key, but it's real easy to get. So you would just fill out the form and they email you your API key. And so it's real easy. So I can share the links for that as well. Oh, too large of an extent. I need to zoom in further. It's okay, we can do that. So it's, it's really neat. There's all these different tools that you can do for pulling in different kinds of uh, different kinds of maps and then elevation models. Uh, with open street maps, you can pull in building data and extrude the buildings. So you can have a, a little 3D city that you can set up and fly through. So that's, that's a lot of fun. There we go. And what it has done here is it's imported terrain. And if I look at it edge on, I hit the three key on the number pad. It's applied a modifier and it's applied a distortion along with it. So I can exaggerate the strength if I want. And this is similar to what I've done in the past with some of the, uh, uh, the Mars high rise uh, terrain. So I've been having a lot of fun with that. Does the high rise plugin still work in the new version? Have you tried um, it? I, I, I have, but I haven't tried it on this machine. I did do it. I did use it at home recently. Um, I did have to make one change. I have to look at my notes and see what it was that I had to change because um, the earlier version wasn't working. I had to get the newer version of it. And I haven't tried it with 3.1, the alpha. I'm working with 3.01. I just wanted to share a couple of things that I've been playing with myself because um, Lenny did did a great job and and you know speaking of geometry nodes, right? Uh, and Alan, speak up if if there are any issues with my screen or anything. But no, uh, so here's good. an Artemis logo, and I basically just took their logo and I made it 3D. So you can import it into your dome, you know, make it rotate, do what uh, Wayne Lenny did, and put it everywhere, right? Let's see. So. This is relatively easy if you have the SVG file, the scalared, the scaled vector graphics file. You can do it with PNG too, um, but you know it, it looks better if you if you if you have to get the vectors. What else can I show you? Let's see. Uh, this one's fun. It's a clover field, and I did use geometry nodes for this one. So this one's way simpler than Waylina's. Um, so I actually just took, I, I grabbed a, a clover field off of Sketchfab and and I just imported in. For geometry nodes, if you want to import it into your dome, you have to make it a real model, right? So geometry nodes, yeah. So that's something that I found out while playing with geometry nodes is that all the geometry is inside Blender. And so if you want to get it actually into your dome, uh, you have to actually create, make it real, is what is is the is the terminology, right, Wayland? I think that's right. Make it real, and then yeah, make apply, real. apply the uh, modifier. Yeah, so this is the original one. So that, that just those few, that's the original model, model, and it's taking that original model and it's just multiplying it across the across the circle, right? And you can randomize things like like how it's rotated, you can randomize the size and the scale and the rotation, all of that. It's it is really powerful stuff. Jeff, can you could mm -hmm. you back up just a little bit and yeah. explain for you know more of a novice type person how you know how you get into the geometry node and a little bit more about how the geometry nodes work. Okay, so for example, I'm just going to import. So this is the original model that I just downloaded it off of um, Sketchfab. Somebody made one and I was like, oh, that's nice, right? And you'll see it's very, very tiny. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale it up. Right? And then I'm going to, okay, so if you notice my cursor, the little cursor is already at the center and I do want it to be at the center. So let's move it a little bit too. just to make it a little more centered. 
and then I will set the origin to the 3D cursor, if you can see that. Same thing for the stems, they, they apparently split up the stems. And then you know what, I'm just going to join them. I don't really want them to be separate, I'm just going to join them. So I'm going to go to Object, and we can, oh here it is, Join. Control J. Like, you know, I, I said this in the beginning, Blender has keyboard shortcuts for absolutely everything, but I don't really find them very useful in terms of learning Blender, because actually going through the, the menus and finding what's possible is very helpful sometimes. Like, I'll find things in the menus that, oh, I didn't know this was here. Like the, you know, Garth, you were telling me that last time you, you didn't know about the flying navigation. That's how I found it. I was looking for something else in the menus, and I was like, hey, what does this do? Uh, so here you go. And, so join. And, I'm going to join, join them. Join and join mm -hmm. in some other graphics programs is equivalent to group grouping. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Sure. So you, now you'll see that I don't have um, them separate anymore. I can't click on them separately. I've joined them. So and now again, there's in this all case, these. It's slightly different than a group because you wouldn't be able to separate them once they're joined, uh, unless you go through and manually select the parts. Sometimes right. vertex by vertex. Oh, oh, so there's no unjoin. Not you in can the un same way. Yeah, you could undo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And you, you can, can separate. separate. So so if you look at this, um, there's a separate, right? Hmm. It might be in edit mode. In edit mode, yeah, you're right. That's right. Yeah, knowing what's in edit mode and what's in object mode also. like. You know, I'm still it's beginning so in Blender myself, right? Is it here? I've been using Blender for 20 years, and it's still, yeah, it's, it's, it's in there. <laughs> Separate, uh, here it is. And, I, and I'm still still learning new things and, and figuring things out. And yeah. uh, uh, for grouping in other software package types, um, I would use the collection feature of Blender for mm. that. I like that. So collections this is here, so you can make a new collection if you want and put everything in there. You can is that more like group? Is that more like grouping then? That's more like grouping. Okay. Yeah. So I can. So it, so if you wanted to separate, say, let's say you wanted this tiny little vector right here, this little but this little leaf right here, you could separate it out right here and say it's by selection. And look, now I have this tiny little square out, and you can do that with anything, but it gets really te really tedious. All right, so now I have my clovers, and let's go to geometry nodes. There's a new there's a new workspace for geometry nodes, and I think it was I'm going to do create a new one. So now what it's taking is it's taking the whole uh, all the little squares, all the little vertices, and it's going to do whatever I want with it, right? So for example, if I wanted to do instances instance on points but i have no points so let's add a circle and i can and i like the search function too if you know what you're looking for but again there's so much here i mean look at all of this right each one of them does something really cool and really really fascinating but i do want to do the circle i do want to mess circle and so the mesh is is it the selection? No, these are the points. And the geometry is the instance. There it goes. And then I can actually do, look at that. I'm just clicking and dragging, and I'm making an entire field of clover, just like that, just from that one. So it's, you can tell, you can kind of tell if you look really closely, that it's just copies over and over and over. And that's what Blender does, because Blender can do the math. Right, and I can make it as big as I want. I can make as many as I want. So it says 32 right there, if you can see it. But then let's just do three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, however many you want. All right. So it's it's super powerful, and that's that's three. What's what Blender three was was really touting as a as a really great feature. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So since you're I've never done the instances thing, but it looks, it, it seems to me that if you were to take that one Clover model and then like rotate it, would mm -hmm. they all rotate? 
Uh, we can try it. I'm, I'm pretty sure they will. So let's give it a try. You can get some great kaleidoscope effects with that. <laughs> yeah. So here. So Alan, you had asked. Um, I was I was looking over the recordings. You had asked about this particular menu. This is just a quick thing to to pull out whenever you really want to. But all of this stuff is is found in other places. Like for example, the object menu right here. So I'm just going to pull this out so you can see that it that it does mirror. So let's rotate the Z and see what happens. So right now it's negative 150. If we rotate, uh, so it'll rotate them together. Oh, it does yeah, the whole thing. Okay, together. that was that was my question. I was wondering if each individual was going to move on its own. If you do want to rotate each individual, I think that's here. Okay. Yeah, that's here. So let's try this and see if it does what you want. That that's what I was thinking. That's what oh, you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Wow. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I could I could see a lot of uses for that combination. It's so yeah, that's great. And of course, I'd use the circle because you're, it's going to be a dome, right? So if I want it in my dome, I'd put a camera in the center. In fact, let's do that. I'll put a camera. I'll add a camera right into the center. Let's zero out the rotation. Zero, zero, zero. But I do want it. Let's do 180. Let's have it looking up. And remember, to get the full dome camera, you need to be in cycles, right? I like my GPU and let's do the camera properties and would make it panoramic and fisheye equity. This is very, very convenient. I don't know who on the Blender team does planetarium work, but they specifically say it's ideal for full domes. So that's, that's nice. So now the last thing to do is set it to a square resolution and then I'll render it. Render just in an image. And oh, I, this is because I didn't delete my old old vid, old camera, isn't it? My old camera is still here. You know, what, I'm just going to, if you have multiple cameras, you can select the active one just like, just by clicking the little camera icon. Let's do that again. Still didn't work. Oh, there it is. So there's my full dome, field of clover, hmm. no muss, no fuss. Put that yeah. up for St. Patrick's Day, right? <laughs> or put up the Lucky Charm. I like the Lucky Charms better, to be honest. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as soon as we're going to post that to our blog, I'm, I'm stealing yeah, it. We do have clovers in our dome for walk-in for St. Patrick's Day, but those were SVGs that I um, downloaded from openclipart.org. Yeah, and this how this is how I want people to start starting Blender. You don't have to make something professional; just make something fun and and just to get into it. You know, I was telling Alan the there's a, online there's a very famous donut tutorial, right? So it's it sounds silly, but apparently making the donut exercises all the basic Blender skills and is an entire series and is very very well done. Oh, um, that's the uh, bl the Blender Guru guy. Yeah, right? Blender Guru guy. Yeah, he's yeah. very very famous. Yeah. I have now twice met someone and when a talk came around to Blender, it's like, oh yeah, I use Blender all the time. They whip out their phone and showed me pictures of the donut that they made. So that's, <laughs> it, it's now just becoming the thing that you share when you, when you meet another Blender user. Yeah. So I haven't made a donut yet because I just haven't gotten around to it, but I, I, I do like his stuff. Yeah. And this goes back into the whole, like, um, you know, how do you, how do you actually make a living off of Blender, you know, if you're not a planetarian, right? People can actually do that. And and I was telling Alan that if you if you yourself don't feel like diving that deep into Blender, get one of your students to do it, right? Waylene, I'm sure you have students do, who do Blender stuff for you. We're starting, not, not so much yet, um, but we're starting to get students that are interested. And so I'm really excited about the potential for that. Yeah, and you know, if I were if I were at Berkeley, Alan, the first thing I would do is I would go to the art department and say, "Hey, do you guys do three D modeling art work? Um, do you have any students who would be interested in making something for my dome?" Um, Good idea. Yeah. And you know, and and Blender does scientific visualizations too, but so but I'm not I'm not sure if any of the physics students, for example, know Blender or or are interested in Blender, but the art students definitely will be. So. Oh, I, I guess I should show you the randomizations. So let's do 
add, again, I'm just going to search because I know what I'm looking for and I want to save time. Random value. And I can do, let's do scale. Yeah, so that just, that just randomizes how big and small they are just hmm. to make it look more natural. Um, and you can do that with the rotation, but if I want, but I don't want them to rotate all over because watch what happens if I do that. Then they're all weird, right? Hmm. So instead, I want, ah, combine X, Y, Z. Called combine X, Y, Z. So you can combine RGB values, you can combine X, Y, Z values, and so now I put this in to the rotation and I can randomize whatever individual thing that I want. So I want to randomize the Z, for example. And now they're all pointed in the right X and Y, but they're all randomly rotated in the Z. Uh, did, um, when you did the random sizing, mm -hmm. can, you, can you set limits on the scale? On uh... Yes. So I'm going to duplicate because I actually want the scale to be different. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's say I want it 0. 0.5 to 1. Maybe 0. 0.5 to 0. 0.75. There you go. Mm. Then I'll just increase the, the amount. And then I'm going to do another, I'm going to add another random one, a separate one, random. And I'll put it in the Z. And then, of course, I want 0 to 360 instead. And the seeds here, uh, so hopefully you know that computers can't really do random stuff, right? They can't really. Uh, they have some sort of algorithm that makes it look random, but you always have some sort of seed. So that's what the seed is. It will give you a different random distribution. And you just remember which one you like best. So like seed 19 is fine but seed zero will always look the same as seed zero. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Like that one, right? And voila, so if I wanted to actually just render out a frame like I did right here, then no other work is needed, right? And I could just rotate this, I could put an alpha channel on it um, and, and have it be done. But if I wanted to actually bring this into as a model, bring it into my dome for manipulation. I did it the dirty way. So I do all of this and I click control, I apply and I make instances real. And watch my collection on the right side. Here we go. This, is, this should be dirty, really, really messy. There we go. So now it made everything here. Now I have an entire giant batch of clover that I can do. And this might be too much. You might want to, you know, decrease it. You can change all those settings. Um, but now I have an entire, all these are meshes. Um, and I can do things to like optimize how well it runs in my dome. For example, this might be a little too much for just a simple decorative model. Uh, and it might strain my computer too much to, to render all of this stuff out. But I can I can adjust all of that as needed. Does that? What do you think, Alan? Is that enough for for you for now? Yeah, that's uh, that's very very cool. Okay. You can have, hey, Jeff, uh, can you mm -hmm. show the difference if um, it's like undo this one and show the other way to realize um, in the geometry nodes? Yeah. I honestly, because, because I forgot still, how, right? Okay, do you, do you, uh, yeah, just do search and realize it should be in the uh, instances subfolder. Um, realize instances, yeah, there it is. Because they do. And I put it in between, results. right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it takes a moment to. So I think I just did that one. So let me undo. Because the two different methods will give two different results, and there are times where you definitely would want one or the other. So yeah. it's, it's cool to know about both. Okay, so now, now I'm back to just the one. And she said it's under instances, uh, and here it is: realize instances, right?
So that becomes nice. And then does that? Then if you let me let me try. That. It. Do I need to apply it now? Mm -hmm. Object apply. Great. So that didn't give you a mess. So that's nice. And if but I export times, it, there are times where you would want the organicness of that giant mess. Right. And I will mm -hmm. save it into my. I'm going to add this. And I will name it New Clover. I do only want the selection. I do want my Z to be up. And I do want to triangulate. So this is triangulate faces. This is something that I need for my dome. I don't know if you, you'll need it for your domes, but if it doesn't work in your dome, this is probably why, because you didn't triangulate your faces. The next step is to uh, have the clover grow from, from seed. Oh, you can totally do that. You actually can do that. Um, there's a again. There's a there's a blender. There's a blender tutorial for pretty much anything you want. All right. So there. So that's just the regular Windows viewer. And I have a suspicion why the textures didn't show up. So that is in the shading. Ah, it's because there is no texture here, and I got nothing. Oh, because I didn't select anything, obviously. Oh, there it is. There it is. There you go. How's that look? Yeah. yeah. Nice. And for some reason, I don't know why um, OBJs show up this way uh, in Microsoft anyway, in Windows anyway. But the Z axis is proper. And so when I import it into my dome, it will show up um, however your dome is oriented. Right. And so this is an actual 3D model, and I can actually import this and, and do whatever I want with it. I could make a little wreath out of it. I could actually make it like rotate in whatever I wanted to. Uh, Kevin, did you get what you wanted to work properly? I, I, I remember you saying you were working on something. Yeah, I guess I, I did your um, spinning earth tutorial. Oh, okay. And thank you very much for that. Finally got me to do something in Blender. Good. And I, I can't even think of how many years I've been thinking of wanting to. Um, I guess I just had one question that it seemed that there seemed to be a little bit of a specular highlight on on at least what I got. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, in the shading. So in the shading shading workspace, if you remember mm -hmm. this one from the tutorial, uh, you can change how these reflect light and deal with light. So specularity is right here. Okay. Right. And some shaders, you know, if you look at the shaders. There's a whole bunch of shaders, different shaders. But the default one, the specularity is right here. You just turn it all the way down, turn it all the way up. For example, if I do this, now I have a mirror. I, I bump the specularity all the way up, and I make the roughness totally smooth, totally zero. And now I have a perfect mirror. You can kind of see it reflecting a little bit. So now I have a black mirror, and I can make a gold mirror. Let's make a gold mirror, because web is great. I'll try it as soon as I can. OK. Um, Keith, anything for you? <clears throat> Any questions for you? No? All right. Uh, so I, I missed it. It was very brief, uh, Waylena. Um, you were showing how you could import terrain, and then you mentioned you could do cities. It just occurred to me that that could be useful for another project I'm working on. So what, what add-on are you using that I could like import buildings from actual cities, like Washington DC, for instance, or New York? Sure, sure. Um, let's see if I can. Yeah, so, so that one is not part of the, um, the built-in add-ons, but people do these things all the time where they just build something on their own. And for some reason, they don't want to incorporate it into the built-in blender. Uh, right. It could just be, they don't have time. Um, but so you it's, just it's search for it. A third party add on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wayland, is this yeah. one it? I, I just picked the uh, first one. Oh, no, it is. It is. Okay. What, what's it called? I want to just uh, get pointed in the right direction to play with Blender it. GIS. Mm -hmm. Blender GIS. Thank you. Okay, cool. That was my question, basically. I can. Yeah, and there's a whole. Yeah, that's <laughs> just um, Blender GIS tutorial. Right? Yeah, the, uh, the one um, that's that. Let's see, create a city in Blender GIS. 
Yeah, you okay. can find them. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I see it here on GitHub. Mm -hmm. That's the okay, cool. Excellent. Here, 11 months I'll, I'll ago. This. Nice. And I recommend for tutorials to follow um, the uh, how to make a 3D city in Blender, but make sure you're using the 2021 version. There was an earlier version of um, Blender GIS that went with an earlier version of Blender, and the newer versions are, are the ones that you want to, to find the tutorials from. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, that's that seems like it will save me a whole lot of time for some projects I'm doing. So this, this is this is great. Yeah, and uh, if um, there is also a a really simple one, there it is. You're right. So just uh, just to confirm, you're doing these add-ons through the preferences. Yeah. So edit preferences and the uh, land. I, I should look for landscape. And again. Each one of these, again, it's it's something worth whenever you're bored, just going through all of these and seeing what they all do, because each one of these is there to do something amazing, right? And look at all, how many there are. And these are just the ones that they bothered to build into Blender. And you can also install, this is how you do it for, with third-party ones, you install, and when you download it, and, and on, on, it'll come in a folder with a whole bunch of files, and, and it'll tell you which ones to add, basically, which ones to select. There are a lot of free ones out there and uh, commercial ones. Um, Ant Landscape, once upon a time, was a, a free external one. And at some point, they incorporated it into the Blender package. And yeah. I, for random, it is so much fun. Ah, here we go, Fictional Mars Train. So this one is a fictional Mars train. I just used that, that landscape to just randomly make a new landscape. And I littered it with Mars rocks using the scatter. And then there's a there's an add water too. So you can add a water plane and just fill it with water. And you can just flood Mars. <laughs> you can make a happy face on Mars, right? Yep, you can make a happy face on Mars, <laughs> right? Yeah, so the, the terrain is, is fictional. The texture is real. I just grabbed a Mars, a random Mars picture. Um, and the rocks, I forget. I forget now. But I'm going to, here's what I do when I forget things in Blender. Blender, scatter, add-on. And there it is, right here. How to scatter stuff in Blender. And so I've become very, very stupid, I guess, <laughs> because I don't have to remember anything. <laughs> and and I just go go back to YouTube whenever I want. So, oh, I did want to show you show people this one because this one, Alan, Alan really liked this one. But uh, there you go. Hey, nice. I made it all shiny too. And I made it all glow. You know, Waylena, maybe you can help me with this. I was trying to make it glow in cycles, but the only way I could find it was to do it through a compositor after rendering. That's it. Yeah. Like, I found someone who's who who said that you could use some sort of fog, a volumetric fog, to try and simulate it. But it does. But you're gonna you're gonna fog everything, so you're mm -hmm. not gonna be able to separate out the elements. Mm -hmm. So if uh, if I wanted to do something where I want just the parts of a texture, I would probably set it up using Eevee. And then I know this sounds really complicated, but I would bake the texture mm. to a texture map and then use it in cycles. Okay. It's There's just no easy way to do it. It's the same way we won't get full dome uh, renderer camera for Eevee. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get easy uh, bloom effect in cycles. You know, Garth made the original SVG, and not the original, but the latest SVG. Well, actually, it's the only SVG version of the of the PPA. Yeah, I was wondering if you actually just used that vector file that I made years ago for this. If I had found it, I would have, but um, <laughs> but I ended up just use, just grabbing the PNG and just doing it this way. So yeah, was, you could just trace it easily enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh, I remember working on that. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I, I didn't but, do the original design, but I made the vectorized version of oh, it. That's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, that came out nice. Yeah, so so there's your dome, and you can have whatever you want. So yeah, so exporting stuff into uh, from Blender, I found is 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 hit or miss sometimes. So when Lena, for example, I, I thought I saw you you just rendered out um, your Lucky Charms. Is that right? Um, for this demo, I rendered out, I scattered them using geometry nodes and I rendered it out just for this demo. But for use in the dome, I ported the models in separate so I could program in the Digistar okay. to make them fly around and, and do whatever I wanted them to do for the sake of- uh, You did all of them separately? Yeah, but once I have them in the Digistar, I can then use its programming to do a different kind of instancing. Okay. So it's it works differently, and empty objects and instancing works different in Digistar than it does in Blender, even though they use the same words, and that can uh -huh. get really confusing. But pretty much that's that's what I did, and that lets me change things on the fly without having to to re-render. I'll have to see if I'll have to see if Dark Matter can do that. I need to make myself a note. All right. All right. Was there anything else that I wanted to show? Mm, I don't think so. Garth, did you have any other questions for, for us? No, no, this was great. Uh, I definitely am going to mess with that. Um, that uh open source uh te texturing from cities and stuff uh mm -hmm. I'm, I'm working on a uh a comic book that takes place in a dystopian future and i need to do a bunch of city skylines from real cities and i was thinking oh that would be perfect oh. now I can, I can just trace that rather than have to make it up and it'll be more accurate for anybody who lives there yeah. they'll be like oh that looks right so yeah this, this is great let's do simple sci-fi Blender. Yes. Simple sci-fi is another add-on. Um, is there a oh, free version? I think there's a simple version. Oh, well, there might be. I think um, I've seen this. Is this where it just like takes components to make like vehicles and spaceships, like like for kit you know, bashing and yeah, like kit bashing. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then um, another thing that I I found another thing that I found would be the Discombobulator. Discombobulator, yes. That's have you played with that? I haven't played yes. with that that much, Wayne. What, um, what do you know about it? I haven't played it. Played with it recently, but in much earlier versions. I mean, it was it was the original tool for making greebles on things. So if you have your spaceship and it's looking too clean and you want little doodads all over it, uh, discombobulator. <laughs> all right, how do I do it? Discombobulator. Let's just do the default and see what happens. How oh, cool. <laughs> but yeah, so there are all these little things in Blender. And, and and I just start with a simple internet search of, how do you do this in Blender, right? There's another thing I've been meaning to explore. I use uh, Procreate for a lot of my digital drawing. And you can, uh, with the newest version of Procreate, you can actually paint onto 3D objects. So. I found a tutorial just a couple days ago of somebody making a, a 3D model in Blender and then importing it into Procreate to paint on it and then bringing it back in and you can export it as a texture for your 3D model. So that's something I'm going to be playing with pretty soon here. What's another good one that I wanted to show people? Wait, did you, did you take a look at the Armstrong spacesuit? No, I haven't. Let me just pull a couple of things. Oh, this is the. That's so cool. That the Nebula model. I had so much fun with that. Oh my goodness. And that one was special. I, I grabbed that. Do you know Kim Arcand at the Chandra? Mm -hmm. um, she does such. She does such great, great work. And she had one of her students actually make this. It's um, so well and... done, and so much, so many fun things you can do with it, it in Blender. I had so much fun. Oh, oh this one was good too. This model, the series of creator, I grabbed that from the scientist himself. He's like, oh, um, here's the cool. here's the digital elevation map. And you can just do what it, whatever you want with it. This one I grabbed off of um, open space, actually. And I and I wanted it for my own dome. 
This I think this was back in the when it was the Apollo 50th anniversary. And I think they got it directly from the Smithsonian. So you can see this little patch there. Wow. Imagine a giant Armstrong stomping around on your moon. Yeah, so this is this is a, I think I'm pretty sure this is an actual scan directly from the model that's in, in in the Smithsonian right now. It looks like it. So yeah, so this one came from the Chandra X-ray Observatory. And this is really going to lag, but let's try it. There we go. And the only thing the the student was telling me about is the core. She couldn't get the core to quite work that well. You can see it kind of flickering that way. But when you're rendering it, you know, Waylina, you can tell me when you rendered it, it looked fine, right? Oh, it, it did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is, uh, I think it's a supernova remnant, right? I think I think I remember this. I made yeah. a camera path to sort of fly into it. It was, it was kind did of Did I do that too? There. There's my lit camera zooming in. And that's a 360 camera, I think. Yeah, 360 equator rectangular camera. Cool. So when you render it, render it out, It'll take forever, I think, right? <laughs> It'll take forever. <laughs> but uh, but once you do, you'll go in and out. You can create curves uh, to uh, just in Blender, curve mm -hmm. objects that go through the model and then parent the camera to it to follow that path to, to, to dip along with it. And that was uh, one of the things that that I did. I did not render out the full echo rectangular, though. I just did a sample of. Um, you know, the only thing that has occurred to me, and this is probably, I don't know how advanced this is, uh, to have a model. Well, OK, when they make characters in video games or movies, there's a model and they move, you know, the arms can move, different parts of it can move around. Uh -huh. um, that must be pretty complicated to do. It is pretty complicated, but it's called rigging. And so, again, I'm just going to do Blender rigging. I mean, even if you had a model like a, you know, of a spacecraft with an antenna to get the antenna to move around, that's the simp that's probably one of the simplest examples of a part of an object moving. And you can kind of tell how complicated something is in Blender by how long the tutorials are. <laughs> so like this one is 13 minutes so so to get you started kind of complicated but not really complicated does that kind of make sense and this is the official one of course the character breaking and this one is only seven minutes so it's advanced but not overly complicated like that's one of the main things that blender is used for right is for rigging animations or for rigging models for moving and there's even motion capture too uh Motion capture. Yeah, so you can see this one's 24 minutes. Right, this one's a 24 minutes. Very, very complicated to do motion capture, but you can do it. So this one is special because I had to redo the surface map because obviously no one cares about the equator of Enceladus. Nobody cares about the equator of Enceladus. You want the South Pole, but for some reason they they still cut the map at the pole, which is like the worst. Um, so I had to go in and, and redo it to make it south centered. This is what I did with the, the lunar south pole, if you remember, Alan. Mm. I had to re I had to redo it to make it make it focus on the south pole. Did you actually change the texture? Yeah. Wow. So what you had to do, do Yeah, so what you have to do for a for a planet especially, uh, you have to wrap it properly really take the do the tedious steps of doing it properly and making sure it's exactly correct making sure all the settings are correct and then re-render it in a 360 video in a 360 image but pointed at the poles wow um did you so, still have to go in in photoshop and mess with because there's that nexus point where it's the yeah. actual pole and it everything gets funky no matter what you do so those settings you they just take uh, some time to do it in blender and it's different for every single one honestly mm. which is annoying but that's how it is um so like different people will spend different amounts of time rendering out the the poles properly uh and they still cut it there which is 
which is mind-boggling, right, when you want to talk about the South Pole, because nobody cares about what's over here, right? <laughs> Everybody cares what's right here yeah. on those tiger stripes of Enceladus, right? So that's what I had to do uh, for this one. It matters more in other types of software than it does in when we're working with Blender, but uh, I know that it matters. Uh, so my husband works for uh, Wolfram Research, Wolfram Alpha, and they make mm -hmm. Mathematica, and um, they have to be very careful to make sure that the equators and the poles are correct because when they're showing planet positions, it can really mess things up if their textures uh, don't match. But you're right, the poles are where all the fun is. This one's really fun too. I grabbed this one from the from the NASA Eyes team, right? So if you haven't seen this one yet, this is this is uh, the web experience that's really cool. Oh, cool. Um, and yeah, they gave me the whole model, which is really cool. So you can have that, and you can have it like come apart in your dome. So yeah. is that all? If it comes apart in a certain way, is that all actually rigged? like all the parts that can move. So this is not rigged because the animation that they do and that we do in the dome, we rig it ourselves basically in the oh, in okay. the dome. So but if you wanted to rig it, if you wanted to animate it, um you obviously could in Blender. Yeah, so Wayland, if if you ever find a model that you really really want, just just let me know. I I have on many occasions wondered, well, wait a minute, wait I see someone gets a model from something from 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 eyes. I'm like, "No, no, where, where did they get that? Where did they get that?" They actually did start doing it. Here, so solarsystem.nasa.gov. So they started. I think what it what it really was was that um, the main their main Blender artist um, was uh, Brian Kamanchik, great guy. He's the one who told me about Blender in the first place. He he retired, and uh, you can see that this is all of his stuff. Yeah, and I think I think the Perseverance Lander was the last one he did. Or I've used a Perseverance lot Lander. of those models. I've used a lot of those. Yeah. Um, <laughs> If I ever see Brian again, I'll, I'll let him know. If nothing else, I hope this whole series of, of Blender Hangouts has just made you appreciate 3D modeling more, right? And, um, and you know, for Kevin and Keith and, and Daria and all those, all those people who, who are only just starting to get into it. But, but like me, you know, I'm not really deep into Blender, I would say. Um, and if I had students and if I had, if I wanted to make um really complex models and really do some really cool things in blender i would just you you know just go talk to some students at my local university even local high school and just say hey was would anyone be interested in volunteering and and making something and learning blender and making something interesting it'll help you it'll help them build their portfolio and their skills you know it's it's a win-win for everybody if you do that and i say that as a student worker right who worked for practically for free <laughs> myself when i was first starting Hanging well out. i mean this has been great you know and i i i think i would especially thank jeff and waylena as our experts here it's been uh you know i've i've been taking a few notes you know jotting down things that i want to experiment and play with um on my own time and jeff when you mentioned uh I think in a message you mentioned that it's good to go project oriented. I mean, you need a particular goal or something to work on, and then you learn, <laughs> you learn how to do that, you know, and the tutorials tell you how to do that. But this has been really valuable. And thanks a lot for, for uh, being here. Yeah. Everybody. It's today's literally my day off. So I, I this is what I do for fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. This is great. I uh, learned a lot very quickly here. I need to get back into Blender. I, I used it a lot before and I haven't as much recently and I'm trying to re-familiarize re myself with it. Yeah, and, and if you work in a lot of um, 2D, I, I hear uh, that, that the, the 2D stuff in Blender 3 is is excellent oh, as well. I've they, heard they that really too. Grease, grease, pencil. grease pencil. Oh my yeah. goodness. Some Have of the you used that a lot, Melina? 
I have not used it at all, but there's one artist and she is a delight to watch and she got into Blender because of Grease Pencil. She does not have a 3D background and she started using it and making incredible art and she is so much fun to follow on YouTube and it is such a great power to see people using, creating this 2D art and then just changing things so that you get a three-dimensional quality to it. it it's, oh, it's incredible. Sophie Jantak? Yes. She's just been great to watch. I mean, as she's learned, uh, as she's learned uh, the, the the tricks of using it and taking you through the the, the art, and it just blow, blows my mind. It blows my mind. And two D is not something that I've ever had any real luck with myself. I would make a three D character to get a two D image because it's easier for me to manipulate the 3D than it is to try and imagine how I want something to look 2D. Mm -hmm. um, and just watching her bring those things to life has just been a joy. Do you have any other place that you look for tutorials, Waylena, just so I know? Well, other than YouTube um, is what I mean. Oh, other than YouTube. Uh, it's been it's been hit and miss. Um, I check Blender Nation all the time, which okay. folks will submit, and that will link to other sources as well. So Blender Nation is is probably my non YouTube go to, although a lot of it now refers to to YouTube. Okay. There's some great Facebook groups for uh, procedural textures, and so those Facebook groups will get a lot of uh, a lot of folks coming up and and. They started off with just textures, but they've gone into modeling now with geometry notes because the uh, workflow is the same. Well, we do have Planetarium um, Blender users group on Slack. And of course, I don't have that on my desktop. I have that on the phone. So I think that's on the Planetarium's Slack group. Okay. Yeah, we've got one for open source and, and one for Blender. So we do get some traction on that. So good places to go there. OK, all right, cool. All right, well, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you. This is great. Yeah. Kevin, Dario, any any other, any you. last minute questions? Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah, and Kevin, uh, like I said, if you have any questions, just, just feel free to email me at any time about anything, pretty much. Uh, yeah, thanks. I need to actually get to some other projects in open space for, uh, right now, but um, I'll get back to this as soon as I can. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. It's all. It's always very inspiring to to see what Blender can do and what you people are doing with Blender. Uh, every time it gives me the the will to go to dive into Blender and start doing stuff, I just wish I I wish I had the time to do it. Yeah, but uh, thank you for these for these uh, tutorials and uh, all your all the information you guys are sharing. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thanks for coming. All right. Okay. All right. Signing off. Signing Bye, off. Everybody. Bye, everybody.